Welcome to this video, my name is Eva and in this video I want to talk about love addiction and limerence and all of that um, on the example of Big and Carrie from Sex and the City if you don't know, it's a TV show that has aired some years ago there's a new one but and some movies but I'm not talking about the movie or the TV show that is kind of the new one I don't, I, I don't watch it but I'm talking about the old one and if you haven't watched the TV show, it doesn't matter it still, it just gives you kind of an example on how love addiction can manifest on people and how it can actually destroy some people's lives, really. And yeah, so there's Carrie, which is basically a woman in her mid-30s or early 30s. And she lives in, I think, New York and she meets Mr. Big. And she has instantly this connection with Mr. Big. And Mr. Big is quite successful in his career, which means that he has a lot of money. And so on. from the first moment that Carrie met, meets Mr. Big, she puts him on a pedestal, which is not good. Because in a healthy relationship, you want to be relatively equal. You want to say, okay, I maybe don't have the same financial power, but I'm still valuable in different areas and I'm proud of who I am. So you want to have a balance between two partners and what happens if you put the other partner on a pedestal and it can be quite negative it can it can affect the relationship quite negatively in a way that um, you uh, for example if you feel like you're above someone uh, and the other person is beneath you it can maybe lead to you not treating the other person correctly um, and you just doing what you want and even also on the other side, if you put your partner on a pedestal and you put yourself beneath your partner, it can really lead to you accepting so much nonsense from the other person and not leaving and um, just feeling miserable because you're not really um, yeah, getting the love that you deserve but you still stick with it because you think, oh, the other person is better than me so I should stay with this person. So yeah huge danger to put another person on a pedestal and I I do that in the past for sure to put another person on a pedestal and thinking wow this person is so much more successful than me and so much older and so much wiser and which was such a mistake because in the end yes the other person is like a couple of years older than me so obviously the person has a lot more time to uh, to become more mature to work out or work on their career basically and even if this other person is more successful in their career etc it doesn't make me less of a person so yeah so i had to learn that for sure too and hopefully you also have to like you also learn that lesson if you tend to put another person on the pedestal and yeah so carrie puts mr big on a pedestal because he's successful and older than her and so she feels inferior and she's also very addicted to the chaos because what happens with uh, Mr. Big is that he actually, at least from my perspective, he puts her down so he infantilizes her when, for example, Carrie's working um, as a freelance worker, writing her own like articles about love and relationships and he kind of makes fun about her saying yeah it's cute or something so you feel like he doesn't take her seriously and you also feel like throughout the whole season it's just so annoying to see their relationship dynamic in a way because it feels always so disrespectful what Mr. Big does to Carrie like not taking her seriously not really considering her and when it comes to a relationship he's um, just going to Paris without asking her really so it always feel like I was so annoyed watching this the whole time because it just feels so annoying you want to kind of shake Harry and say oh my god what are you doing and you also want to uh, shake Mr. Big and saying what are you doing why are you not like why are you both not just ending it and find someone that you perceive on your level for Carrie to go to therapy, for Mr. Big also to go to therapy. Um, yeah, because he's just really, he's absent, he's um, treated, like talking down on her, he's not seeing her on the same level as him, uh, even though I think in the way of majority level they are on the same level. 
and yeah so it's I think it's a mess and I think both of them actually because they haven't healed certain parts or their childhood wounds probably they still are super addicted to that chaos and to that dynamic of this uh, for Carrie I think she's really addicted to this to this excitement and because what happens if someone gives you that intermittent reinforcement so if someone is hot and cold it makes you addicted to that person because you never know what happens and then when that person uh, for example doesn't give you love um, in the one moment and then finally you work so hard so Carrie works so hard basically does everything for Mr. Big eventually he gives her love it feels even more exciting exciting so it feels like this roller coaster it's up and down and all of that um, and just this huge obsession also and obsession is really not love and I think that's also something that I had to learn there is a difference between being attracted to someone and having that obsession with someone and actually really loving someone because love is really it's um, quiet it's stable it's kind it's slow it's not this huge firework and I think for a lot of people who have unhealed trauma from childhood, which I think Carrie has, it can feel really boring to have a stable, healthy relationship because this chaos is missing. So, yeah, really, really important to, to go to therapy. This whole series, when I was watching it, I was just thinking, please go to therapy, like, <laughs> please, because you're in this situationship, which is basically that it's no real relationship, both people are not, like, she's committed, but Mr. Big is not committed, which is a situationship, and he's just stringing her along, and I'm just thinking, please, Carrie, just leave, <laughs> leave the stupid relationship, um, but that's just what happens, if you don't heal your childhood trauma, I think Carrie probably had a dad maybe who was absent, who left her or who was just not emotionally there for her. So she probably still subconsciously craves that love from an absent partner. But you know, you cannot get the love from an absent partner. So I think Carrie should really work on herself, work on self-love and work on releasing the need for toxicity, for drama for for this um, huge roller coaster because what happens if you don't do that if you don't work on that is that you will sabotage any relationship which we also see when uh, Carrie gets together with Aiden which is a guy that is actually really kind and stable and there for her she feels trapped because it feels if you don't heal if you don't go to therapy it, this stability can feel really boring it can feel really <sighs> really boring, exhausting, and you see it that Carrie starts to cheat on Aiden with Mr. Big, and um, I think obviously watching it, I was feeling really uneasy about it, but it also showed the process quite well of a person who's not willing to go to therapy. Those because, for example, Mr. Big, he only wants her when she's with a different partner so he's very egocentrical very only thinks about himself what he wants and I think that it was so so interesting to see how she slides into that cheating because in the beginning she was Mr. Big was calling her and she was saying no uh, don't call me and this is done but she still answers the phone so it, I think it was so fascinating to see also the process of um, sliding into cheating, that it's not just uh, you meet this person and bang, you, you cheat, but it's just it's a, it's a process of, of another person that, you're, that you have that attraction for, of calling you and you answering, because she at any time just could have answered, but she was always like, no, don't call me, but she's still answering. So I think that was really sad to see, but also really uh, interesting to see how how humans work in that way and how specifically humans work who haven't dealt with their childhood trauma. Um, so yeah, that was really interesting to, to see and it really showed me how, why, like the importance of learning how to be okay with yourself, how to heal your childhood trauma, because I think then in, in the later seasons and in the movies, the writers change the script a bit to make Mr. Big a better person, and they changed Mr. Big, but in real life, 
people don't change. So you cannot expect someone who is doesn't see you as an equal to from one moment to the next see you as an equal and turn into this a uh, great person. So yeah, I think really important do therapy if you if you have the feeling that you put other people on a pedestal especially your partner if you have the feeling that you crave this chaos if you have the feeling that you um, desperately need the validation of of men um, of of you desperately need a partner that you think is better than you because it gives you that sort of satisfaction and that sort of um kind of feeling good about yourself like these are all points that are not so good and it really shows that you maybe have unfinished business from childhood trauma maybe you had a dad who was narcissistic or a dad who was absent um or maybe even just a mom narcissistic etc and you really have to deal with um deal with that you have to go to therapy and i think for mr big also he should um <sighs> I'm so annoyed. <laughs> I'm so annoyed at this because like this dynamic has um happened happened to me kind of. I mean I never cheated, but this whole dynamic of putting another person on a pedestal and feeling so wow because the other person likes you and oh my god <laughs> it's uh I hate it to look to look back on it. Um but yeah you can really see that there is a um power dynamic in a relationship. Mm. and it's really not 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 positive and so yeah if you watch this video maybe you have watched sex in the city or you just um you just feel like you're in a relationship that is not satisfying for you because you feel like you're running after someone who's not invested in you please take a moment take a step back and you know start reading therapy books and start to heal whatever wound you have because you yeah you deserve to um be with someone who's invested in you and also once you are with someone who's invested in you you deserve to actually to to feel good about it because i read a quote that i find is so interesting which is um healing from childhood trauma or from trauma is learning to feel good and okay with the peace because when you grow up in certain childhood trauma maybe your dad or mom ha was narcissistic um, you grew up in, in a lot of chaos and you grew up basically with this dynamic of putting another person on a pedestal in, for example, with, with a narcissistic parent to put your narcissistic parent on a pedestal and you cater all your needs to that narcissistic person and so you grew up in this, in this dynamic and in this chaos and it's just what you take with you to adulthood so you really have to, when healing, you have to be you have to learn how to be comfortable with with just things being stable and with things being committed and it takes a lot of time to uh, to learn that but it's so important to learn that because life is not a movie it's not a okay then in the movie everything is great and mr big turns into this great person the reality of the situation is that mr big will not change your mr big will not change if someone is not really interested in you is, is playing with you he will not change from one day to the next so yeah the best thing <laughs> is just for you to if you're dealing with that to heal your childhood trauma so that you can slowly um be okay with things being stable and in some ways boring so yeah so that was that <laughs> go to therapy if you deal with someone who is like mr big like re really charming really really uh, exciting all of that excitement and attraction does not equal a healthy relationship and you have to make a decision in the end what do you want do you want excitement and attraction and um putting someone on a pedestal or do you actually want a healthy relationship and um, that you cannot have both so yeah that was the video for today what do you think about this couple what do you think about this dynamic in general in relationships what is your opinion? Have you ever put another person once on a pedestal and made yourself inferior to them? Have you been a doormat? Have you um, maybe happened it to you that another person put you on a pedestal and you played with them? Um, yeah, have you ever experienced that dynamic? So thank you so much for watching. 
and I hope you have a wonderful day. If you like the video, give it a like. If not, not. <laughs> and I see you in my next videos. And yeah, if, if you want to learn more, feel free to check out the other videos. And so much love.